So what do I think about Weight Watchers? The good, the bad, the ugly. We're going to deep dive in this podcast. Stay tuned. I'm Christy Code Red, and you're listening to Rebel Weight Loss and Lifestyle, where we believe food holds the power to heal or poison, and we believe our society has been misled regarding proper nutrition and weight loss. You're in the right place if you're looking for some straight up truth, because I'm here to shed light on the lies and brainwashing that has taken place over the past five decades. Thanks so much for listening. Welcome back to another episode of Rebel Weight Loss and Lifestyle. I'm your host. I, I almost said, sis, I almost said I'm, I'm your host, Carrie Thompson, because I was thinking about you. You were I'm thinking about me. That's funny. <laughs> I'm your host, Christy Code Red. I'm an author, entrepreneur, retired professional boxer, and I think it is time that Carrie introduces herself. I don't know if we did it on the last podcast, but Carrie's my sister. You'll hear me say sis throughout the podcast, but Carrie... In addition to being an MSNRN, you lost over a hundred pounds, didn't you? I did. I used the Code Red lifestyle for the most part. I did, uh, in full disclosure, have weight loss surgery, but did not lose the majority of my weight from lace weight loss surgery because I did not understand the principles like we're going to talk about today of eating healthy and eating the Code Red way. And once I finally addressed the real problems. I was able to get that weight off and I've kept it off for about 12 years now. So, so excited that Christy allows me to come on here and be her partner in crime while we, while we spank Weight Watchers today. No, 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 no. It's going to be good. We're going to have some good news. <laughs> yeah, we're going to be honest. Um, and I've done over 1200 YouTube videos on my channel. You can always, you might be watching this on YouTube, but you might be listening on podcasts. Um, but you can always look up. I've done a lot of different diet comparisons, but we've never actually did code red versus blank on a series. So this is the first video in a series of videos where podcasts, where we're going to deep dive into the different popular diets. And our biggest competitor is Weight Watchers. Now, Weight Watchers was founded in 1965. So it has been around a while. And we're going to talk about the things they do well, the things that they the way that they pivoted in during the pandemic and what's going on now. We're also going to talk about how I completely and totally disagree with Weight Watchers on certain things and how you will not be 100% successful in your weight loss journey because of the certain things that they believe. Christy, I have done Weight Watchers. Oh, have you ever done Weight Watchers? No, I've just, I know about it. Yeah, because you weren't really fat. <laughs> You were like fat. You weren't like fatty, fatty. I can say fatty because I used to weigh that much. Okay. But Christy, I have done Weight Watchers and I've done Weight Watchers at several points in my life. So I've been able to watch the evolution of Weight Watchers over the years, what it was like a long time ago. And then, you know, what it's like not most recently, obviously, but you know, more recently what it's like. And so, and I have to tell you, uh, other than the slow weight loss, they were really pretty good experiences. I don't think it's good. Like what people experience on code red, but they weren't negative experiences for me, but yeah, over, over the years I have done code red or I, of course I have done weight watchers over the years. According to the financials, they were in some serious trouble right around the pandemic when it all just started happening. And Oprah Winfield, Oprah Winfrey bailed them out and bought Weight Watchers. And so now they're now they they're, they're back in business. I think they got rid of their executive staff. They got a new executive staff and they were able to pivot on to more of an online because Weight Watchers is known for and did very well with their in person weigh-ins and in-person support groups and in-person meetings. Now I did a little bit of research and found out that within a 30 mile ra radius of the treasure Valley, there are four meeting points where I could meet with the Weight Watchers group. And I thought that was interesting. I personally thought that was pretty darn good. The first time I did Weight Watchers, Christy was in McCall, Idaho, when we lived there, when my kids were little, and I met at a church basement, church basement, 
Mm -hmm. And one of the things I really loved was the group and the support. You felt like there were a lot of people cheering you on and you had to weigh, of course, this is funny because in code red, we weigh at a certain time of the day, you know, uh, we weigh naked, naked, naked eggs and bakey on the scale and in weight watchers, people be getting on in their church clothes. And, you know, back then I didn't think anything of it, but now I laugh when I think that, but I did, I did find that there was a lot of support and Weight Watchers is everywhere or online. I mean, you really can do the online, the online version, which is great. They have an app and they have an online version and they do encourage you to, you have to become a member. Um, they, they advertise $2 a month, but once well, I read through the fine print and found out that no, it's $2 a month for the first couple of months, but then you, but you have to commit to at least six months, of course, so they can get their money back. And the prices range anywhere from 30 to $65 a month, depending on the length of time that you sign up for them. So I thought that was reasonable. Um, and I didn't expect really, uh, anything less as far as prices go. Now, Weight Watchers is based on a point system and the point system is based around calories. Here, that, that's where my, that's where my problem is. They, they only count calories, uh, and they give you, you know, they, they give you a certain amount of calories personally. Um, when I looked into it a little bit, they gave me too many calories. In fact, they gave me more calories than what I even burned during a day. Um, so right off the bat, I was a little bit like, how is this going to work when I'm taking in more than I'm burning? Um, they also have, they're very proud of the fact that no foods are off limits. Christy, it's genius. Think of it this way. Mm -hmm. Think of it this way. We have been indoctrinated to hate calorie counting. People do. They really, and we get pushed back on Code Red. If you get a uh, home study program, which at the time of this recording, you can get a month of VIP with Christy, right, Christy? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's an amazing deal, y'all. You should go look that up right now. I just have to plug that. I mean, you know, that's an amazing deal. But, um, and even the people on our home study program, they, they balk. They give us a bad time about counting calories, looking at macros, fat, protein, uh, carbohydrate percentages. But Weight Watchers is genius, Chrissy, because they have bypassed that entire idea of having to count calories and just assigned generalized calories to generalized points. So I don't know if one point is technically like hundred calories. I'm not sure how they do it. I don't care. They probably don't even tell you, but what they do is they give you 20 points a day. And in 20 points, that is super manageable to think about a thousand calories a day or, or two thousand. That's just too much for people. So it's really smart what they've done. But as we know, a calorie is not a calorie is not a calorie. I mean, it just doesn't work that way. Like Chrissy always says, 100 calories of broccoli is not the same as 100 calories of ranch dressing. It just isn't. Your body doesn't recognize it that way. So that is their first mistake that they make. But Chrissy, I will say, I do think it's genius that they came up with the point system because it takes the mental block that we have regarding counting calories away. But they're still technically counting calories. If you read directly from their uh, website, uh, it says here, it says, um, use points your way. Your plan will include a points budget and how you spend those points is up to you. Wine on a date night, Sunday brunch, birthday cake, no food, no event, no celebration is off limits. And yet if you run out of points, that's where zero point foods come from. So, and I, I want to talk about the zero point foods, but oh, that makes me nervous. Oh, sis, I, I, I clicked on it. I said, zero point foods. Um, you would not believe what they consider. Are you ready for the zero? So yeah. these are foods, three ways to eat zero point foods. It says here, um, these zero point foods serve as a foundation for healthy living. So they don't count towards your points. There's zero points. Are you ready? Beans, peas, lentils, chicken, turkey breasts, Corn and popcorn. Remember, guys, you can eat as much of this as often as you want. Eggs, fish, shellfish, fruits, vegetables, tofu, yogurt, and cottage cheese. So then what do you use your points for? 
Uh, exactly. Yeah. Birthday like, cake I mean, and wine. B- birthday cake and wine and a Snickers bar. But you can eat all the pop. Carrie, I was, I love popcorn. And I was so fat because I was eating popcorn all the time. And they're saying that these foods don't even count towards your calorie budget. Chicken, fish, there's a lot of calories in these. I'm not saying they're bad. They're just, there's a lot of, cal- how can they say that they don't count? Well, I think their motto sums it up. Are you ready, Christy? I opened up weightwatchers.com and this is what it said staring at me. Christy knows what I'm going to say. I'm looking over at my phone, lose weight without giving up what you love. And that is our society in a nutshell, Mm y'all. Our society is, I want to have my cake and eat it too. And I had a friend that's losing weight and she said, I don't want to be told what I can and cannot eat. And folks, we've done a million podcasts, a million podcasts on the fact that that catches up with you eventually. That attitude catches up with you eventually in in a multitude of health problems. I took care of a type one diabetic, again, not this person's fault, but their blood sugar was so fragile, Christy. In Mm -hmm. the 12 hours I had this person, and again, not their fault. I'm not talking about type two. Type one is an autoimmune disorder, but still this tells you the fragility and the, the awful health consequences of diabetes. This poor patient had blood sugars from 60, where I'm trying to feed this person and give them a D50 all the way all the way up to in the 400s in one shift, blood sugars all over the board. So we know that the attitude of lose weight without giving up what you love eventually catches up with you. And especially in the form of diabetes, the health consequences are horrible. So to me, society tells you have what you want without consequences, have all the popcorn you want. Have all the fish you want, have all the chicken you want. Those are zero points. So I do feel like they're missing the mark. Are they just encouraging people to eat those foods, Christy? So they don't want to assign points to them. Is that what you think the marketing strategy is? I think because they're, they claim that because of the fiber content that it, you just end up, it just cancels it out. But we know that this is not really happening. I, you cannot sit and eat bowls and bowls of popcorn or servings and servings. And and I think they think that you'll fill up and you'll just naturally stop. I can tell you, I have a family history. Carrie and I have a family history of obesity and our um, entire one side of our family, every single member is obese. And Carrie and I have battled with this too. And I want to overeat so, so, so bad. I mean, just the, like Jim Gaffigan says, people tell me to stop eating when I'm full. I don't stop eating when I'm full. I stop eating when I hate myself. And that's the thing is these they, I think they think, well, how much chicken breast could you actually eat before you start to, I could make myself sick. I don't well, know you, what you'd be surprised. Yeah. Yeah. So I, you know, and, and, and another all thing is fruits, all fruits and vegetables, Chris says fruits and vegetables. Yep. And wow. legumes and lentils have lectins, which are toxic to the inner lining of your, uh, of your intestines. And so I'm in your stomach. I'm just I'm amazed. Another thing, sis, that I notice is they don't count carbohydrates. And so that's why, like, they, they count um, calories, fiber, protein, saturated fat, unsaturated fat. So they're still stuck on that fat thing. And then added sugar, added sugar. Well, so the fact that there's 26 grams of sugar in a medium sized banana and 26 grams of carbs, it doesn't matter to them. That just, that just, that cancels out. Well, I, I was fat eating this way. Wow. I did not know about that many free foods. I remember there being free foods before Christy, but they were like celery. Yeah. Celery or, and it's pretty tough to get fat on plain old celery. Like you're going to have to work hard. Yes. If you're eating bell peppers, you will get sick on bell peppers before you gain weight on bell peppers. If you're dipping them in ranch, that's a different deal. Right. Um, Christy, one thing I like is that they have, they, they, they're very smart. I'm looking at the website here. If you see me looking down is that they have their, uh, linked purchases, like the scale that gives you all the metrics and links to your account. And the other thing I like is the support system. And one thing that Weight Watchers has always been really good about Christy is recipes. They have recipe upon recipe, upon recipe, upon recipe for days thousands and thousands and thousands of ideas. Uh, You're never going to have to wonder. You can probably say, I have these three cans in my cupboard. What can I make? And some lady from Weight Watchers in Iowa can tell you 
what you can make for dinner. I mean, it's, it, they, they do have a lot of recipes. So I like the community support. I like the recipes. I like the shift towards better health, but I think they're really playing into, you don't have to give up anything. So they're trying to kind of be anti code red, anti keto, you know, if you want, and, and by the way, some of these principles, we teach you in code red, once you get to goal weight, the idea of if you have a special event coming up, planning that indul indulgence, that is something we teach you in maintenance once you've lost your weight. But when it's time for you to lose weight, when you have an elevated A1C, when your fasting blood sugars are 150 and way up there, when you can't feel your feet, when you have decreased kidney functioning, when you have heart problems and someone needs to go in and put stents in, folks, it's time to be serious about weight loss, not being worried about wine on date night. But unfortunately, nobody tells anybody no in our society anymore. Ain't that the truth? And you mentioned diabetes and they said we, they really tout the fact that they have a a customized diabetic tailored plan. But if you look at the foods that are allowed, healthy whole grains, fruits and vegetables, there's chocolate on this plan. Um, and, and they say they, they, they brag about the fact that we, over the course of six months, will we, you can have a 0.75 reduction in, in A1C in your hemoglobin A1C. And it, that we can get that we do, we can do that so much better in just a matter of two weeks to 30 days on code red. And they're saying, oh, a 5.9 centimeter decrease in waist circumference over six months. I don't know anybody who wants to take that long to get healthy and lose weight. It's really a slow process and it's not getting to the root of the problem. I, when you're, when your pancreas is so beat up, when you are, when you're all the complications of, of diabetes, you don't need to be eating these foods. Like it's go time. It's, it's desperate times call for desperate measures. And so I don't think this is aggressive enough to treat a serious problem like diabetes. Now, do I think that there are people that do Weight Watchers and they are successful and they get down to go weight? Absolutely. I mean, you can see the testimonies. I think the testimonials, excuse me. I think there are, are a lot of people that are very successful and Weight Watchers has really helped them. But I believe they've kind of embraced a different version of it. Um, they've kind of come around the corner um, and they've understood portions and they've understood correct foods. The other thing Christy, I noticed about Weight Watchers is if you are eating... If your points bring you to lower calories, because that's the point, correct? That's the idea, because we know that your calorie intake has to be lower. I mean, that just makes sense. You cannot eat as much as you're eating normally. But if you're coming down in calories, that you have to bring up that fat level so you don't kill each other and starve to death and feel like you're going to die. That's one thing we do at Code Red is that we give you fat, we give you bacon, we give you avocado, we give you nuts, we give you yummy egg salad. I just made a whole thing of deviled eggs. Someone got mad online when I said deviled eggs the other day and she was like, oh, angel, Carrie, really? angel, angel <laughs> eggs, angel eggs. I was like, no. I mean, I don't know what, what's the better way to say that. I, it's just what they call them. I don't care. Deviled eggs. Good Lord. But I have a whole thing of deviled eggs and there are lots of good fat. So when you get the fat, we've talked about in this podcast many times, you're satiated. You can actually have a salad. That's not uh, as big as your upper body because you're not just eating lettuce. You're having good, yummy fat and fiber and good things on it. It keeps you fuller longer. So I wonder I wonder how the people on Weight Watchers, since they don't have set eating times, if they just try to do within their points and then when they get really, really hungry, they start eating the zero point foods. That's the part that kind of worries me a little bit. Oh yeah, it worries me to death because I that's exactly what it says. Run out of points, question mark. That's okay. You can choose from the zero point menu. It there's no saying no. There's no there's no stopping someone. I will tell you, sis, that the best thing, in my opinion, that Weight Watchers has ever done and continues to do. I don't know how prevalent it is after COVID, but the in-person meetings. I learned that from Weight Watchers. I mean, they, that is so powerful. The community support is so 
powerful now because of of the way that our society shifted and things are not like we know it anymore so many things have gone to online and their website is beautiful their app is beautiful i mean they've got oprah's money and so they were able to build something top of the line uh and nobody even comes close to them uh but so it's a really strong, solid, very big database. And that's awesome. Um, but the, so I think that they've shifted more to phone calls and, and like chatting in the app and stuff like that, but in-person meetings, oh my gosh, that is so huge. And Weight Watchers pioneered the in-person meeting. I worry though, Christy, and I think this has been the problem, good and bad with Weight Watchers, that it becomes more of a social club. Mm. Like, oh, all the girls, the dental office, we all do Weight Watchers. Hey, look, I brought zero calories, zero point popcorn. And then they all, you know what I mean? Like, let's go out for margaritas after we weigh in. Let's go have Taco Tuesday after we weigh in. Uh, I'm, I'm not saying that people doing it aren't serious. That's not what I'm saying. I think there are a lot of people that are very serious and they do lose weight and they do change their lives. Um, but I think a lot of times because of those in-person meetings, because of that group and that community, it doesn't boil down to you. You, Sally, sitting down at night in front of a bowl of chips and salsa. That's what it boils down to some days. Not what the office is doing, not what your friends from work are doing, not with what the other people are doing. It boils down to you, you, and you when the decision time comes. And I think that that is one thing that there's not, there's accountability, but there isn't that personal responsibility uh, because it's such a group thing for some people. Right. And a bottom line is you have got, like we talked about on the podcast, the magic is in you. You have got to take responsibility and they let you out of, there is a way to get out of that. They don't hold your feet to the fire. And I don't, I personally, yeah, I'm, I'm not a fan of that. Also, I'm not a fan of the fact that Weight Watchers gives you back extra points. If you exercise now, Ooh. I was writing, <sighs> I was riding 300 miles a week on my bike with when I was with Miles. At one point early on many years ago, we would do always a 100-mile bike ride on Saturday. That was always our big day. And then we made up another 200 miles during the week here or there. We rode almost every night, uh, and it was various lengths. I, I would burn 5,000 calories during my 100-mile bike ride. I mean, that would break the Weight Watcher system. And yet I was the fattest I'd ever been. And I was the heaviest and my thighs would hit my stomach when I would cycle. So to give me back, I mean, that would have been, that would have been awful for me. And that's what I did was I was kind of eating anything I wanted. And that's, that's what they do. You go for a walk. Okay. You get X amount of steps. You can sync your watch with Weight Watchers and it just knows how much you move, gives you back extra points. And that's why we've got fat athletes because athletes think they can eat back more or whatever they like. And, and we don't have anybody making headway. Well, I do like that they encourage movement. Sure. But it's very interesting here on their website, Christy, it says we help you lose weight and build healthy habits. One small step at a time. They say that uh, fad weight loss diets can be restrictive and rarely work long-term. Huh. Fad. Well, the thing is they have such slow loss. Like people would have 0.2 for the week and the whole room would be like, oh, right. I mean, they would clap and everyone, I did half a pound in a week. I mean, we are not seeing these numbers in code red. We are not seeing these numbers in code red. We believe that you should get the weight off as safely, but as quickly as possible. Weight loss is not a fun process for anybody. It should not be become what you do socially. Yes, is it healthier than going out for tacos? Yes. Is it healthier than binge drinking at the bar at night? Yes. So I appreciate that Weight Watchers, Weight Watchers is giving people a healthy alternative to eating, uh, to, to other activities that involve eating, you know, a healthy social alternative. But the fact that they say slow, one small step, step at a time, it is like they want it to become who you are. Not necessarily what you do. Uh, mm -hmm. I am a Weight Watch Lifetime member. I am this. I am that. This is what the office does. This is what all the ladies from the church do. Instead of, again, like I said, that personal accountability and being serious about getting that weight off once and for all. Hmm. And I hate to say it, it's about money, but, and I'm a capitalist and that's fine. It's just that 
I mean, that makes sense. We, we want Code Red Rebels, but we want them to get their weight off, transfer into maintenance, and master this lifestyle, and then go on to become a mentor and maybe a coach and, and, and lead others in their journey. My number one biggest problem with Weight Watchers is that they don't address the root cause. They don't get to the to the root of the problem. They if if they don't if if you have a drinking problem, they, you can spend all your points on wine, and they're fine with that. If you have a sluggish pancreas, type two diabetes, or you're pre diabetic, which means your A one C is above five point seven. It, they don't talk about that. They don't say, Hey, Oh, you maybe need to avoid. They don't, they don't, they don't say you're these like code red rebels. We choose foods that heal. It is in our mission statement. We believe food holds the power to heal or poison. We choose foods that heal. I don't see that on their website. They don't care if you have foods that heal or poison, as long as it's within your, your point budget. I do. I'm, I, I know exactly what you're saying. That's not the message you're putting out, but because they're giving these zero points only to healthier foods, except for legumes and popcorn. We know that. I feel like they know these guys are nutrition experts. Like these people have master's degrees and PhDs in nutrition. So that's stupid. They know that McDonald's is not good for you. Everyone knows that. So they're, they are definitely saying, Hey, you can have your cake and eat it too. And I believe that they're hoping that when you get in the community, when you start shifting more to the zero point foods. So instead of getting a Big Mac and using up all your points for the entire week or a little hamburger or a baby fry, you're going to say, I'm going to go home and have my zero point chicken and a big thing of pasta or whatever. Like you, you're going to start making better choices. So I can see that they're trying to push people along to make better choices, but they're not making anybody make hard decisions. There's Great no point. hard decisions with weight Great watchers. Point. You hit the nail on the head. You're right. They're, you're exactly, they're not making them come face to face in a hard and fast, a yes. uh, uh, quick way. Like we do, like we just like, we're I'm up in your face right off the bat. And I don't say anything about hydration on here. Christy, did you notice anything no, about I, water? I take, I did not see that as well. When I look through here. Well, I mean, that is scary because as you start to lose weight, your body releases toxins and you have to poo them out, sweat them out or pee them out. So you got to be hydrated just enough to get those toxins out just by itself. So that's another kind of nerve wracking thing. But maybe if you take it in more toxins to replace the ones you're getting rid of. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> And I know on code red, our basic, basic, basic level, which is the 10 pound takedown and even the seven day total body reset are two basic programs that enter people into code red. We track our water, our weight and our sl sleep every day. And so, uh, I know that, 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 uh, weight watchers wants you to, to weigh once a week, not just the public weigh in. They want a, a once a week weigh in, uh, while you're in weight loss mode. That's all, that's all they want you to do. Um, and I did confirm that with the former weight watch weight watchers, uh, member, but they don't go over sleep. If you ain't sleeping, you ain't losing. I don't care what program you're on. And then I don't see anything about hydration anywhere there. And that's the first thing we go over at Code Red. Got to sleep, got to drink that water. Number one, right off the bat. And we know you can keep up those habits the rest of your life. When I was doing Weight Watchers the first time, this is before smartphones and everything. Obviously, this is when my kids were like one, one, not one and two. They were little. Christy, they had the coolest booklets and you could buy them. <coughs> they were expensive. And you would flip through it and find your food and see how many points it was. So you'd be at Burger King, opening up the page to Burger King because it was coated red or whatever. And you'd be <laughs> trying to get and then down, down. Okay, I can have the chicken nuggets. Okay, but I can, I'm just going to have four and then I can have a small fry. Okay, and then you would order. So I do think that they they are good for, and I'm sure that's all integrated into the app now. You could just type in the food and it'll tell you how many points it is. Um, I do like that they try to help people out in a, a variety of situations that involve eating. But again, Code Red is way more about personal accountability and making hard decisions quick. Because the more you have to make hard decisions, the better you get. When I was a brand new nurse, I had a hard time. I, I mean, I didn't have a hard time, but I struggled at first with making very hard life and death decisions about critically ill patients. And the more I've done it over the years, the more experience I have, the easier it gets. So when people start Code Red, they can't imagine not having Starbucks every morning. 
They can't imagine not having an egg bite or a, 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 a cake pop. They can't imagine not having their uh, bedtime popcorn. Again, speaking of popcorn, but Christy, the more they have to make these hard decisions, the stronger these people get. I have seen some of the most strong women I've ever met in my life. Amazing women that have done Code Red. Amazing people and men. And, and the fact that um, with Code Red, we are, I, I just think we have a lot of pretty sick people that come to us that their blood pressure is out of control. Their waist circumference is out of control. Their triglycerides are out of control. Their fasting glucose is out of control. Their A1C is out of control. And the, we've got to get serious and we need to get serious right now. You don't have six months to a year. You don't have the time to take it slow. It is right now because this body is crying out to heal and you are you are every day chipping away at, you know, uh, um, at your life and you're, you're not, you, you're, you need a CPAP. You don't have that under control. I mean, this is really getting bad quickly. A lot of people come to see us. We are their last resort before bariatric surgery. So not everybody's very sick when they come to code red, but most everybody's failing two or three of the five metabolic markers. And that is something we need to move on right now. And that's why we take you, we take you up through a lot more of an aggressive path to healing than Weight Watchers does. Zero to 60. Yeah. That's yeah. What we do it code red. <laughs> yeah. When we, we, I know the 10 pound takedown, you know, you can lose at least 10 pounds in 30 days by following very, very basic rules. And we ease you into the proper human diet. We ease you from the standard American diet of 60% carbs, processed carbs to a high fat diet, uh, and eating off the food list. And we just move you in a direction of better. Um, it's, it's, Definitely quicker than Weight Watchers. You're right about that, sis. It's a slow weight loss. Uh, but so, you know, that is much, but we also hold your feet to the fire. And especially if you join VIP where you are connected to me all day, every day, and you're going to hear from me all day, every day, I don't mess around. I want my rebels to be compliant and people come to us when they're serious about losing weight. It's just too much ability to skirt the rules and weight watchers too much. And if you give me that kind of leeway, I don't know about you, sis, but I will take it and run with it. And I will finagle the rules and, uh, and buck the system and just find the workaround for everything. And it feels like to me, the weight watchers all do it. It's moving in a better direction. It's one big workaround. Their again, their theme is lose weight without giving up what you love. And that kind of sums up the whole thing right there. Well, we hope you enjoyed this episode of Rebel Weight Loss and Lifestyle, Code Red versus Weight Watchers. The first of many of these we're going to be diving into, the good, the bad, the, the, bad, the ugly of all kinds of diets, fad diets, um, whatever diets that people do out there. And we're going to compare them, compare them to Code Red, which is the proper human diet. We love you guys. We'll see you in Code Red VIP, and we'll see you on the next episode. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much for listening to Rebel Weight Loss and Lifestyle. If you are looking for some hardcore accountability to get and keep this weight off, look no further because I've got VIP connection. This is the ultimate connection to me just short of me sleeping on your couch. You're going to get three daily messages from me in real time directly to you. You're going to submit your weight every Friday. We're going to go over it in a weekly meeting on Sunday nights, and I'm going to give you feedback. You'll have access to a monthly VIP breakfast with me and Boise, a monthly VIP supplement box, access to any workshop, any PDF promo that I hold for that month. You'll have access to the ringside membership. And best of all, you'll have a fully customized nutrition program written just for you. We're talking about over $3,000 total value for $3.97 a month, and you can cancel any time. Go to coderedlifestyle.com forward slash VIP to check that out.